we're going to look at some of the things you probably want to do when you've got design groups set up. Let's suppose that your grouping is done, and in this example, I have a design group for the two outside columns, for the inside column, and for the beam on the top, and I'd like to size some of those members. But before we can do that, we have an issue to deal with. If we take a look at the beam on the top, it's shown as a red, red dashed line, which indicates it's failed. What's that all about? To figure out what's going on is to go to the design filter and select flyby information and then hold your mouse over the member. And when we do that, we get some information regarding errors saying no deflection load combinations are defined in the load case manager. So we're asking it to do deflection checks. If we select the parameters and look at them, we have member strong DY deflections being calculated or checked, but we don't have any design cases to check them against. So we've got to fix that problem. The other thing I want to do is when I set up my columns, I said that there are no live load reductions, but I know these two columns have a live load reduction factor that could be applied. Let's say it's 25%. And I'd like to know how to do that. And I can't right now because it's not listed here in live load reduction. So we have to deal with that issue as well, is to go back to the model view and select the load case manager. And in the load case manager, go to load combinations and select deflection checks in the list of building codes. So that will hopefully take care of the beams problem. For live loads, we have to tell it ahead of time if we want reduced live load cases. And we do that by, sele by selecting live load reduction at the bottom here. When I do that, I'm going to set up that 25% reduction case. And I could select others as well. But you have to manually select how much reduction you want to use in your design. So I'm just going to do this 125 reduction and close this out. And now when I go to de my design view, I've got a couple things that have been done. First off, my member is at least not dashed anymore, but it has a unity check value of 2.0, so we've got to do something there. It's failed. And for my column, if I select it, I can now go to the live load reduction and select my 25% that I set up before. So now that I've got that done, I have my column set for live load reduction and my beam has a failed state. Let's look at how we can fix the beam and also possibly design or find the lightest section that would work for us. If I select my beam, go to the design ribbon, look at the things I can do, I have an option to design the group. I'm gonna select that. And when I do that, the following dialog comes up. For design selection, I really have two basic kinds I can do. I can select from a database of shapes, or I can do parametric shapes. Let's start with the database of shapes. I have an option to return all shapes, which is currently set to no. And what will happen when I reset to no means I'm only going to see the five sections that are giving me a unity value closest to one. So I'm going to leave those settings and hit optimize now down at the bottom. And I'm going to see that I start at a W10 by 39, which just barely makes it all the way down to a W16 by 45. I like the 16 by 45 because it's more of a beam section, so I'm going to select that. Notice I could have also selected from different categories over here under database info. I could have selected even different material categories like the aluminum database. For steel, I could have selected from W's or WT's, M's. So I have the option of which categories to select as well. I'm going to go ahead and select Accept Design. We'll see that my Unity check now is at 0.88 and I no longer have a red failed member. Let's look at the parametric way of designing. And to do that, I'm going to select my column group this time and go to my design ribbon and select design the group. And now I'm going to select the parametric option. When I do the parametric option, I have a shape type I can use, which can be an eye shape, channel pipe. Let's go to a pipe shape for this column. And now I have the option of whether I want to hold the diameter constant, 
whether I want to hold the thickness constant. And I'm going to select no for both, that I'm going to have both the diameter changing, and I'm going to start that diameter value at 0.5 feet or 6 inches. And I'll allow it to go up to, let's say, 1.5 feet or 18 inches. And we'll increment that by 0.0416 feet. For the thickness, I'm going to let the thickness start at, let's say, 1 inch. I'll set the end to go to 1.5 feet or 18 inches. And I'm going to increment the thickness by 1 8 inch or 0.125 inches. So now I've set some very basic parameters. I'm not going to select return all shapes and I'll select the five shapes closest to one for a unity value. So I'm going to go ahead and hit optimize now. And when I'm done with that, I'm listed with five shapes that are listed based on areas. So lightest first, the first pipe that happens to be six inches in diameter by 0.0833 or one inch thick will work. And it will give me a unity value of 0.98. I go up from there with different thicknesses. I increase the diameter and use, can use that value. So I'm going to go ahead and check this particular pipe shape and say accept design. And now that I'm done with that, I have designed my two outer columns as parametric pipes.